So this is a short video about the causes of the American Civil War. There's a lot of reasons why the war breaks out, and it's a very controversial topic. Because each one of the different causes, some people say, well, this one's more of the reason why I oppose to this. And it's very debatable, and it's still argued very commonly today. But I'm going to just kind of explain them briefly. There are no real order. Uh, they just kind of, I'm going to go through them as they sort of make sense to me to explain them. So, the four big causes would be the difference between the economies, between the North and the South, uh, the question of slavery, sectionalism, and states' rights. And I'll go through each one of them very quickly and explain, explain to you how they play a part in causing the American Civil War. So, let's start with economy. The North actually is not too bad for farming. Uh, but it's not its entire focus. The North tends to be broken up a lot more by rocky fields, uh, rolling hills, smaller farms opposed to large-scale farming. And, along with their harsh winters, the economy of the North for a long time hasn't really been based on farming. Some places like Ohio, maybe, but most of your New England states, not really. Instead, in this time period, they started developing manufacturing or making things using machines. Along the eastern seaboard, up in the, the northern states, they started taking goods like cotton, buying them even from the south, and turning them into uh, manufactured goods like textiles. So instead of focusing on the growing of crops, it was the taking of the crops and making them something more valuable. Um, the north, because they were doing this, didn't really rely on, on slave labor or growing things, and instead they relied on immigrants coming in to work in their factories. And this really helped start to develop towns and cities in the north. So the north moved more towards cities because they had these factories and urban centers. The south was much more attached to growing. I mean, there's a lot of open fields, a lot of fertile soil uh, along the river basins. And so you found that the south was really, really invested in growing crops. They were particularly interested in growing crops that were making the most money at a time, and they could do it large scale. They could have large farms growing one type of good. Some of the most common crops would be things like cotton, rice in the Carolinas, tobacco, and indigo. Indigo is uh, used to make a purple dye. It was very popular at the time. Uh, the type of center for life became the plantation. The plantation is not a city. It's basically on this large, large scale farm. Uh, it was the center of the whole, the life. It was like a small town owned by one person. Um, usually you would have slaves work on these, in these fields and they would develop one type of crop. As you can see from this picture, I mean, they have more than one crop exactly, but they would probably invest most of their time taking care of cotton or rice. And this was the whole function of Southern life. It wasn't towns or cities. It was the plantation was the center of their life. So their economy created two different worldviews about what was important. That led to the question of slavery, which, as I just discussed, slavery had kind of started to die off in the North. It was leaving. It was kind of on the way out. There had been slavery, but because farming was never as important to the North, it wasn't important to them to keep slavery. The South, though, saw slavery as very, very important. Their whole lifestyle, the plantation lifestyle, the growing of crops, it was based on this idea that we needed to produce it cheaply and slaves were a free um, workforce. The type of slavery you see in the South is called chattel slavery, where you own the person totally. We usually think of this type of slavery today, but it wasn't always common in world history that you would own a person outright. Uh, traditionally, slavery could be for a short period of time, um, but chattel slavery was you own the person and even their children. And slavery in the American South could be very, very brutal. Depends on the type of master a person would have, uh, but African Americans experienced some really, really uh, terrible um, situations. But as I said, um, the South was really, really dependent on this type of labor. And so whole communities of slaves were in, developed in the South. And the penalties for trying to escape could be very harsh. 
chattel slavery, once again, works off the premise that people could own you as property. And so for a lot of Southerners, they didn't see the slave issue as really a question of humanity, but as ownership of a property. Can someone come and take my, my horse? No, well then how could they take my slave? You could see even in Texas, uh, all the green counties here are the counties who are going to eventually vote to leave the United States. We'll talk about that in a second. But they're all in counties that were really focused on growing crops. Uh, uh, the Orange counties were vote, were, uh, voted to stay as a part of the Union. But all the green counties are right in the middle of cotton growing territory. The North, because they had gotten away from slavery, they developed this culture of abolitionism where people wanted to end slavery. And you find people like John Brown, the guy on the far left, uh, William Lloyd Garrison and Frederick Douglass. All these people were arguing that slavery was really, really evil. And you would see more and more of that conversation pop up leading up to the Civil War because the North didn't feel like it really needed slavery and it was a moral evil. That's all part of another conversation called sectionalism. Sectionalism is it's not really that difficult to understand, I, I wouldn't say. It's basically the idea that people from the South see themselves as Southerners. People from the North see themselves as Northerners. What's interesting about that is they didn't really always see themselves as Americans. If they were to meet each other, you know, they would talk in those terms. I'm from New York. I'm a Northerner. Um... People from the South are weird. They believe in slavery. They have this kind of culture that's odd. And Southerners would say the same thing about Northerners. They would call them Yankees. And they really didn't see themselves as part of one country. I mean, yeah, they knew it, but they didn't talk about themselves as one country. They referred to themselves from the country they're from. This comes from their different economies and geography, and it really was easy to see the split between the two. They felt like two separate parts of the world instead of the United States. And because they saw themselves as dif different, it was easy for them to paint each other as monsters or just people who had no understanding of what it was like to be from the other part of the country. The last cause is the issue known as states' rights. We talked about something similar to this earlier with the difference between federalism and centralism. Do the states have more power than the central government? Or does the central government should have the final call on all decisions? This really kind of played out um, because the South didn't like a lot of the laws being passed by the North. And they argued that states should be able to decide if they didn't want to follow laws or not because we were called the United States. The states were more important in their mind. And they really were afraid if the North were to pass laws to end slavery, uh, then they would need to be able to get rid of them, not to have to listen to them. This kind of popped up once when South Carolina nullified or ignored a law that the North had passed that kind of affected only the southern states. It was a tax on things like cotton, and because the South was really into you know selling cotton, it really affected them and didn't hurt the North. And so they said, we don't have to listen to these laws. Uh, it really popped its head up when Abraham Lincoln became president. In 1860, when he was voted in as the President of the United States, so many southern states saw him as an anti-slavery, pro-northern guy that they said, we can't have him as our president, and we don't want to be part of the U.S. anymore. They argued that they should be able to secede or leave the United States. They said each state is its own separate identity, and it should be able just to walk away if it wants to. And so a lot of southern states did. And they formed something called the Confederacy or the Confederate States of America. So all the states you see in red, they said, we're not part of the U.S. anymore. We don't have to listen to United States laws. The Constitution doesn't really apply to us anymore. And so they formed their own states. So there's about 13 uh, states that did this. Well, the northern states said, no, you have to listen to the law. We all are part of one country called the United States. We have to be united. And they said you could not leave. It seems really weird, but the southern states are trying to leave. And the north said, no, you can't do it. And it became this question of states' rights. What rights do a state have over the central government? 
And so that kind of leaves us with the causes of the war. In summary, the economy of the North being manufacturing and the economy of the South, agricultural, set them at, set them at two different sides of what they value. The South really needed, at least in its mind, slavery to be successful. The North said, no, that was wrong. Uh, they saw themselves as very different and weird, uh, not even part of the same country. So when the South tries to leave, arguing that they had states' rights to ignore law, the North said, no, you are weird and different, but you don't have the right to leave. And so that will set us up for the American Civil War.